Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. National Anthem of the United Arab Emirates. Your Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates, Ruler of Dubai, President de Masi, Your Highnesses, Excellency, Distinguished Guests, Members of the Governing Board, Parents, and Graduates. On behalf of the American University in Dubai, welcome to the 16th Commencement Exercises. Class of 2013, you have reached this point today because of the many actions of a diverse group of people from around the world, your family, your community, and your faculty. Today, diversity is the theme. It is the cement that will bind you all together in the years ahead. You are the culmination of all our efforts from wherever you call home and our hopes. Together, we have prepared you to become tomorrow's leaders, armed to face the world's many challenges. Class of 2013, AUD was charged with a mission to prepare you for a successful future. With your success, and you will succeed, you will impact the future, the future of our nations. And not just today, but also tomorrow, and perhaps even the tomorrows of those who are not yet born. You are fortunate to have studied in Dubai, for no person better exemplifies 
this special calling than His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. It has been said, a man can live about three weeks without food, three days without water, three minutes without oxygen, but only one second without hope. At AUD, we have tried to embrace you and immerse you in this hope. Because in Dubai, we are inspired to dream more, learn more, and achieve more. In Dubai, we have entered the race for excellence, which in the words of His Highness, has no finish line. In Dubai, we are all taught to aim big and achieve big. In Dubai, people from 200 nationalities come together to achieve. It is where the East meets the West. It is where people from different cultures and different religions live in peace, harmony, and respect. The creators, educators, bankers, poets, artists, inventors, and investors all meet in Dubai. This is made possible in the United Arab Emirates through the vision, the leadership, and the example of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the United Arab Emirates, <laughs> and his brother, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. <laughs> Together, they have afforded its residents a quality of life that is amongst the highest and best in the world. President Clinton perhaps said it best during his meeting with the American University in Dubai's Clinton Scholars last month. He said, places that have come back from the tough economic crisis, the best and the quickest, are the ones which have an operative model which creates cooperation across all sectors of society, races, religions, and ethnic groups, where people find a way to celebrate and are proud of their differences and they work together in shared responsibility. President Clinton, who was impressed by the success story of Dubai, observed that Dubai's model of shared prosperity is more important today than ever and is an inspiration to many countries in the Middle East. He concluded by saying what we all want to say, that today Dubai is in a very strong position to win the bid for Expo 2020. Why is Dubai in a strong position? The answer is self-evident and simple. Thanks to the long-term vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and his belief in his people's ability to, to excel. Class of 2013, that is what you have to live up to. That is your challenge and your goal as you enter this, this race with no finish line to bring success, hope, and wonder for all your tomorrows. In the end, allow me to offer you simple advice as you move into the world. Life is short, live it. Memories are sweet, cherish it. Opportunities are rare, seize them and challenges are there, face them. Now, without any further delay, allow me to introduce to you tonight our first commencement speaker, who symbolizes what I have been talking about here today. Ariana Huffington. She is the chairperson, president, and editor-in-chief of the Huffington Post Group. She's also a nationally syndicated columnist and author of 13 books. In May 2005, she launched the Huffington Post and quickly became one of the most widely read, linked to, and frequently cited media brands on the internet. And in 2012, the site won a Pulitzer Prize for its national news coverage. She herself has twice been named to Time Magazine list of 100 most influential people. Originally from Greece, she moved to England when she was 16 and graduated from Cambridge University with a Master's of Arts in Economics. 
But there is more to Ariana Huffington, apart from looking amazing, of course. What makes her special, what makes her the special woman she is today, is not just her intelligence, but her wisdom. She says that there might be many intelligent leaders in the world today. They're just making the wrong decisions. She, however, has been blessed the ability to make right decisions, such as moving to New York some years ago, when the man she fell in love with in London did not end up marrying her because he wanted cats and she wanted kids. It's his loss, of course. That move made her start another interesting chapter of her life and made her seize the opportunities which have led to her success. Today, our students have the opportunity to have her share with all of us her inspirational story, one that is accomplished and above all, full of wisdom. Your Highness, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to present to you Ariana Huffington. Thank you so much, Your Highness, members of the faculty, graduating class of 2013, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I'm really honored and grateful to be here to share this seminal moment with the class of 2013. And I'm particularly moved because your experience parallels my own. I, too, was born in Athens, Greece, and was educated at Cambridge in England, far away from my home, as many of you here who are graduating today. And uh, for me, too, it was an incredible milestone because I was brought up in Athens in a one-room apartment at a time when my father, who was a journalist, had started a newspaper that had gone bankrupt. So we had no money, but I had a mother who believed in one thing, her children's education. And she believed that no matter what, we would not stop that education. She sold everything she had. She was left with just two dresses, but she borrowed, she worked hard, so that we could fulfill our dream of a real education. And one day, when I looked at a picture and saw in a magazine a picture of Cambridge, and I said, I want to go there, everybody else said, you'll never get in. You hardly speak English. We have no money. How can you get there? But somehow, she helped me make that dream come true. And I'm sure in every one of your life, there is someone maybe a parent, maybe someone else who has sown some seeds in your mind, in your heart, that you could do whatever you wanted that made it possible for you to be here. And also, of course, they shake Mohammed because your support and your visionary leadership has made it possible for so many to be here. The foundation with a commitment to bridge the knowledge gap between the Arab world and the developed world, the Dubai Cares initiative that has promised to educate a million children around the world. These are a great testament to your belief in education. And today, we are here to celebrate both your milestone and the power of education to build a life and to transform the world. And what is amazing is that education is not going to stop today. The greatest blessing in my life is to look back and see that every day is an opportunity to learn, to educate, to grow both our minds, our hearts, and our soul. In the third century, a philosopher called Plotinus said, there are three stages of knowledge, opinion, science, and illumination. And you're surrounded here by amazing Arab literature, Arab poetry, spiritual traditions that at the heart put illumination. 
And illumination ultimately is about wisdom. Illumination ultimately is not just about IQ and intelligence. Because we look around the world and we see leaders in business, in media, in government with very high IQs making terrible decisions. It's not that they are not smart, it's that they are not wise. So, as you start your journey in life, please remember that tapping into our wisdom is the key to everything we are doing. And no matter how many heights you are scaling, no matter how much you are doing to change the world, remember to disconnect from technology and reconnect with yourself. And never stop contemplating the cosmic riddles and asking the big questions about our place in the universe. So as we look at the world today and we realize that what it needs more than anything is empathy and wisdom, let me just point out some key things about wisdom. First of all is the recognition that the purpose of our life often doesn't make sense as we live our life, but only as we look back on it. And also to remember that very often the greatest enemy we're facing is inside our heads. It's our own fears, our own doubts, and it's a part of the voice in our head that I call the obnoxious roommate living in your head. So don't listen to that obnoxious roommate. Don't listen to those fears. I wrote a book called On Becoming Fearless. By that, I didn't mean literally having no fears because fear is a universal human emotion, but I meant not letting our fears get in the way of fulfilling our dreams. Fearlessness is like a muscle. The more we use it, the more it grows and strengthens. And as my compatriot Pericles said, courage is the knowledge of what is not to be feared. Very often, we are afraid by things that do not deserve to be afraid by. Montaigne, the French writer, said, there were many terrible things in my life, but most of them never happened. So remember not to move into negative fantasies, but to actually Live every moment, every day, as fully as you can, with joy and wisdom. And often, when we look at our life, we see that it was moments when we dared to move on despite the obstacles, despite the challenges that made all the difference. I remember for me one of the lowest moments in my life was in my 20s when I had written my second book and it had been rejected by 27 publishers. So as you can imagine, it was a really low moment. I had run out of money, I was living in London at the time, and I began to wonder whether I had picked the right profession or whether I should do something else. And I remember walking down St. James Street and seeing Barclays Bank. And something made me walk into the bank, ask to see the bank manager, and ask him for a loan. Remember, I was armed with nothing but a lot of Greek chutzpah. And for some reason, the manager gave me the loan. And I still sent him a card, a holiday card, every year. And for me, it was the moment when I, can, I could begin to trust life. It's a little bit like in the fairy tales, when the hero or the heroine is lost in a dark forest, and suddenly all these helpful animals come out of the forest to help them find their way out. Well, in your lives, look out for these helpful animals. They may be disguised as human beings or bank managers, so you don't know who, but these are the people who are going to be there to help you through a dark moment so that you never, ever lose hope. And through all your life's successes and failures, remember that failure is not the opposite of success. 
Failure is a stepping stone to success. And there is nobody who has succeeded who has not failed along the way, often many, many times. And when we remember that, we find the strength in us to keep going when times are tough. And much though your parents, those who love you, I would love to protect you and say there will not be hard times, that comes with life, that comes with experience. And in fact, through these hard times, we can grow our own strength and wisdom. Archimedes, another Greek, said, give me a place to stand and I can move the world. And that place is inside each one of us. It's a place built by our own strength, by our own wisdom. And so no matter what you do through life, remember to keep building that place. In fact, your generation needs to redefine what success is. Success is not just money and fame. Success is about a third metric that is a combination of our wisdom, our well-being, our ability to wonder, and our ability to give back and make our lives about something more than just ourselves and our own careers. All of you have a unique, amazing story. And I want to invite you to share that story on the Huffington Post. I want the world to know about your stories. I want you to tell us your story in words, in pictures, in video. In fact, I'm going to make it really easy for you. I'm going to right now give you my email address. And you can send your story directly to me, Ariana at HuffingtonPost.com. The world should know about what you are doing because this is a phenomenal moment when so many nationalities, so many religions and cultures have come together peacefully for the sake of knowledge, understanding, and education. And when the world knows about that, it will be easier to overcome the dark days that we are all facing. And to those of you in the School of Media and Journalism, let me just say, <laughs> let me just say, don't see your job as simply telling the world what is not working, what is dysfunctional, what is in crisis. See your job also as celebrating what is working, telling us the stories of innovation, of creativity, of compassion, of empathy, because when you put the spotlight on these stories, you help them scale, you help others be inspired, you help others replicate them. So those of us in the media have not done a good job putting the spotlight on what is good, on what is working. And remember, goodness like evil starts with small steps. So please be part of the solution, thank you. So as you are leaving behind you this beautiful campus, tap into your own leadership potential because the world desperately needs you. And that means daring to take risks and to fail as many times as it takes on the way to success, and more important, to remaking the world. And to do all that with more balance, more joy, more wonder, and more gratitude. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ariana. Students of the Muhammad bin Rashid School for Communication have asked me, have asked me to play a role in the Huffington Post. And in speaking with you yesterday, she was very receptive for the idea and suggested perhaps we can find some kind of a collaboration between the Mohammed bin Rashid School for Communication and the Huffington Post. Thank you.
Would His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, President Demasi, Provost and Deans, please take your places for the conferral of the degrees. Upon recommendation of the faculty and with the authority granted by the UAE Ministry of Higher Education and the State of Georgia, the American University in Dubai hereby confers the following degrees. Master of Business Administration, Badr Abdel Rahim. Maysoon Bilhaul. Noura Al Ghaif. <laughs> Fatima Al Ghaif. <laughs> Ibrahim Al Hosani. <laughs> Mansoor Al Kaitoub. <laughs> Muhammad Al Khatib. Hind Al Madani, Maita Al Marashi, Muhammad Al Marzuki, Muhammad Al Umari. Radi Al Khizai. Amina Arora, Mustafa Asad, recipient of the MBA award, presenter Dr. Muhammad Abu Ali, Yasmin Atalla. Shayma Badri, Abdullah bin Salama, Arwa bin Ishaq, Badriddin al Hallawi, Farah al Nashar, Zena al Sheikh. Maryam Imadi, Hanan Hwayer, Lynn Kalape, Marta Kanatsen, Abdullah Lajam, Yogita Manwani, Arizo Pravi, Vishka Patari, Sami Nasser, George Simran, Sara Talib, Tara Tavakuli. Lucas Urbanek, Tariq Yahya, Bachelor of Business Administration, Hassan Abbas, Nadine Abdelhafiz, 
Amir Aboudi. Hamza Abu Saad. Amir Abu Saif. Muhammad Abu Ida. Ahmed Abu Sharf. Deepak Adnani. Faizan Ahmed. Aizan Aitamu Hamitova. Wael Ajam. Basil Ajam. Hira Kamal. Abdul Aziz Al Abdul Ghani. Abdullah Al Abri, Kom Laude. Abdul Rahman Amiri. Saud Al Awadi. Faria Al Awadi. Sultan Al Awadi. Hussein Al Badad. Dana Dafa. Sheikh Al Rumaythi. Nur Al Faqih. Nur Al Hajj. Moza Al Hraizi. Amal Ibrahim. Yusuf Al Kurdi. Marwan Al Marwani. Isa Al Marzuki. Muhammad Al Mazrui. Asma Al Mihari. Rashid Harib. Sara Al Mulla. Nura Al Mur. Abdullah Al Ajja. Muhammad Hanif. Khuzama Al Saadi. Majid Al Sabri. Omar Al Saeed. Hanan Al Samad. Ali Al-Shahi Mahmoud Al-Sharif Aliya Al-Shirawi Reem Al-Suwaydi Aisha Al-Suwaydi Sultan Al-Tamimi Yasmin Al-Turk Sultan Al-Ulama Rashid Al-Yasi Ahmed Al-Zaim 
الجازي العيد عمر الحميري محمد علي أحمد أحمد الجناحي فاطمة الكالي داستن البيسوف دانا التميمي حسن أمين مجنة كوملاودي حامد أميران هشام فخر الدين Kawardeep Anand Huda Anwar Fatima Arafat Abdul Hamid Asmar Amin Assalama Malik Atif Khalid Atalla Sony Babani Shahrayar Badi'i Aybak Bakjinov Muhammad Bilhaul Batul Bizano Karan Bambani Summa Cum Laude and the recipient of the program award, presenter Dr. Muhammad Abu Ali. Verka Batia Summa Cum Laude. Gayatri Batia. Mohit Bohjuani, summa cum laude. Tomilola Bibilari. Ahmed bin Harib. Saeed bin Luta. عبد الله بن أحمد الأنصاري، عامر بن خمسين، العنود بوبشيت، فالماتا بوكار، محمد بوميد. Ali Zahid Bot, Jean Claude Shamoun Cum Laude, Parts Chaudhary, Shadi Shahade, Albert Shibokhashian. سارة شوكسي ساندرا شويري كوم لاودي كيزار دار ماجنا كوم لاودي 
Yasin Dawood, Amir Darbani, Ghadir Darwish, Ali Driyai, Ihsan Davudi Zade, Jikar Dakan, Basil Dibs, Ubaid Dawi, Diana Jibrailova, Remil Ammar, Ribal Al Halabi, Omar Al Hamouri, Ahmed Al Musawi, Mahmoud Al Sawi, Ashraf Al Shafi'i, Adam Al Khawli. Minna Tambuli Cum Laude Mark Onez Roseanne Azzi Lizzy Fabie Cum Laude Ala Farid Ivanka Fernandez Zia Ulla Fruzi, Simran Gandhi, Akshita Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi, Denise Gassimli, Summa Cum Laude, Meherdat Qaidi. Ruzbe Rabi'i Maryam Guzelal Imad Hafiz Ali Haydar Kareem Hamoum Khaliq Hassanli Maryam Hashimi Zade, Fawziya Al Hassani, Nawal Hatoum, Maryam Hayani, Deepak Hochandani, Nabil Ibrahim. Amira Ibrahim Tamerlan Iskandarov Dana Iskandar Lavina Israni Jaktarina Ivanenko Cum Laude Muhammad Ayal Zainab Jafarian, Kamran Jafar, Kamran Zafar Javed, Lorraine Jankiz, Rawan Qaddura, Hussam Din Qaddura. Maria Kalamuddin Hissa Kamali Donna Kamun Magna Cum Laude Madiha Kapadia 
Nishan Karamshandani, cum laude. Hala Kayal. Ali Kazani. Marwa Khuri. Malika Khoshkombayev. Mahmoud Makki. Nadia Mansour. Niha Mato. Masha'al Makki. Omar Amin. Usama Hakim, cum laude. Malika Muhammad, magna cum laude. Hina Muhnani, magna cum laude. Damir Mukanaliyev. Laman Murdadova. Lian Murshid. Haydar Muzaffar. Malak Nasruddin. Mary Monde. Aminato Nias. Al Nur Novrozov. Inkar Nurbayeva Magna Cum Laude. Dalal Bassam. Nemet Pelejja. Mayang Pachulli. Hujja Purwani Magna Cum Laude. Addison Paolo. Muhammad Iqbal Rafiq Cum Laude. Srivina Rao. Lida Rozi Talib. Mu'in Rogani. Vladimir Rotesinski Cum Laude. Mahnur Saeed. Sabah Sahni. Amir Saleh Zahi, Vijaya Santosh, Maryam Sattar Cum Laude, Lana Sawaf, Pooja Sawartya, Dina Sitkazieva, Kuria Shafi'i. Alina Shakirova, magna cum laude. Laura Shalmohanova. Yelena Shamina. Sanya Sharifi. Shade Shade Angelica Shimko Mana Shir Mohammadi Ali Riza Shujai Alia Talib Dana Tantarova Samira Tehranchi, Wilson Tisari, 
Elia Isaac, Maisamali Virani, Junaid Wahidna, Kanat Yeskanderova, Dina Yamer. Afnan Yunus, Karim Yusuf, Razan Zahra, Atusa Zainali, Suhail Karmustaji, Baurjan Jaman Kolov. عبد الحبيب زكريا محمد بن راشد سكول فور كوميونيكيشن كلية محمد بن راشد للإعلام دوحة عباس ماجنا كوم لاودي شاهيناز عبد الستار ماجنا كوم لاودي فرح عبد الحميد كوم لاودي كنانا عبد العال عمرو عبد الحميد آيا أحمد نينا أيدساني أمينة أكتوف نوار العكاوي عبد الله الخال منال الكيومي هايا الماني رينا المغني ماجنا كوم لاودي حنين القطناني مريم الشامسي سارة الشيباني أميرة السريحي كوم لاودي بيان السطري سمى كوم لاودي and the recipient of the program award, presenter Dean Ali Jaber. Hussam Ali, summa cum laude, and the recipient of the program award. Presenter Dean Ali Jaber. Amna Al Madani, cum laude. Rawan Al Muhammad, cum laude. Maria Alvarado. Alina Asif, Hanin Asaf, Dana Shirkawi, Magna Cum Laude, Ula Al Barkuki, Muhammad Asawi. Iman Allah Cum Laude Maha As-Salihi Aya Al-Awawi Roshni Harwani 
روان جودي عليا كريم مجنى كوملاودي تلار كازانجيان دينا خضر محمد العطار عمر ميرزا بسنت مرسي سوزان منذر مجنى كوملاودي ريم منير سنا نادر كوملاودي سليمان عوكر بافان باريماني جاكي تشان باريماني روكاش رازا شيماء سعيد بهزاد سندلا عبيدة تكريتي ماجنا كوملاودي أمير باقري كشبو أطما شنداني رنا زيوار Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering Ahmad Abdel Hadi May Abdel Latif Sarai Aguilar Ahmad Zain Muhammad Adumur خالد الحسن عبد الله المطوع غيث الشيخ احمد اليوسف جوجو تشاو محمد الأرملي عباس الموسوي نيكويا سهبي رهيف عز الدين مسعود حسن كور علي جناتيان عادل جشي حسين منصوري سنا سيفائي شيرين شبنم زكريا تلليياني باتشر اوف ساينس ان كمبيوتر انجينيرين راند العنيزي هاني شوا Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering رعد صغيرون سيف العامري ماجنا كوملاودي عبد الله النعيمي محمد الشريف نادر السنيدار 
Hussein Muhammadi Summa Cum Laude. Sana Durgam Summa Cum Laude and the recipient of the program award, presenter Dr. Ala Ashmawi. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Fahd Al Rashid. Mus'ab Matar, Bashar Mar'i, Bachelor of Science in Computer and Information Technology, Amin Abdel Mun'an, Ahmed Al Hussein, Rashid Al Mahiri. Caroline Macharia, cum laude, and the recipient of the program award, presenter Dr. Khaled Khawaja. Khuzayma Saifuddin. Bachelor of Arts International Studies, Maryam Al Rashidi, <laughs> Bachelor of Fine Arts Interior Design, Salma Abdullah. Reem Abu Khalil. Yusuf Adji. Omnia Al Jundi. Muhammad Al Rais. Marwa Al Shaybani. Marwa Al Shammari. Juba Alipur, Farah Ataya, Shog bin Hindi, Crystal Bitar, Bigad Ligritli. An Al Marri. Tala Al Wazan, Ulugmurud Al Gashab, Hiba Hani, Aidan Gasimli Magna Cum Laude, Rahma Hilmi Magna Cum Laude, Mahitab Hussein. Fatima Jat Purwala, John O'Day Jr., Arum Kamal Magna Cum Laude, Angie Khalil, Ornella Khattar, Shayan Khuzai. Azin Khalaqati, Nafisa Khurvash, Reem Al Musalli Magna Cum Laude, Umay Mamad Zade, 
Rana Hassan Cum Laude Zara Muslih Alina Nasser Aida Anayad Noura Uthman Andira Ospanova Munira Rahman Haniya Rastilari Cum Laude Hajar Razimjo Samin Muwahid Juhi Sharma, Magna Cum Laude, and the recipient of the Program Award. Presenter, Chair Albert Fakhouri. Ayuchi Sachedei. Ola Sulaiman Humaira Taufiq Bachelor of Fine Arts Visual Communication Iman Abdel Hussein Hassan Abu Saqr Muhammad Abu Al-Qamsan Bashar Ajalani Farah Al-Qusaybi Mu'tasim Al-Maskari Aisha Arif Rashid Asnashari Jatshri Padavia Cum Laude Nikita Chawla Cum Laude Lilia Shahab Ulu Dada Pega Daria Atal Mannan Baha Ad-Din Sol Hardik Magna Cum Laude and the recipient of the Program Award Presenter Chair David Poindexter Muhannad Ali Salma Hussain Sara Kamun Zainab Karim Raisa Khouri Malika Koposinova Sonam Kurwani Sharanya Konath Cum Laude Mira Lafir Uma Manthia Cum Laude Nazanayn Naddaf, Magna Cum Laude Zena Annaib
Salma Rihawi. Nuha Salmin. Hajir Shihabi. Would you please join me on congratulating what is now officially the American University in Dubai, class of 2013. Thank you, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. As, as I was asked by the students who are still standing today, they all asked me, Your Highness, they want to repeat what they just did with their hand, and then everyone raises his hand and is telling you, We love you. Please be seated. Allow me to introduce our second commencement exercise speaker. His Honor, the 41st Mayor of Los Angeles, Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa. As a, as a fellow mayor, I must admit to a certain kinship with His Honor Although, by the way of comparison, my own home time, hometown, where I am a mayor, Dhur Shwer in Lebanon, is probably the size of Westwood in Los Angeles. And my budget is $800,000 
while your budget is $8 billion. Born on January 23, 1953, in the Boyle Heights neighborhood of East Los Angeles, Via Rai goes as the oldest son of four children, being raised by a single parent. It was in these early years that he developed his sense of community and belief in civic justice. He attended UCLA and then served both as a member of the Los Angeles City Council and the California State Assembly before being sworn in as mayor on July 1, 2005. His second term began on July 1, 2009, and he speaks with pride about becoming the mayor of a city that his grandfather had moved to 100 years before him. Most recently, he received national attention as chairman of the 2012 Democratic Convention, an enormously popular and successful mayor. He has said that with the end of his second term, he will ride off into the sunset and maybe write a book, work in a private sector, or join a think tank. But I think you will all agree with me that being a young 60, he still has much to offer both to his country and to all of us. So if I may presume, Mr. Mayor, it's not yet sunset. In fact, for you, it's not even late afternoon. Allow me, if I may be three years ahead of everybody else, to call you, Mr. Governor, the stage is yours. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Vice President Boussab, for that kind introduction, uh, for the promotion, for your friendship. And I said uh, last night at dinner, although we may have different budgets, uh, the job of a mayor is the same whether it's a small town or a great global city like LA, and the only difference is the stage. Uh, they knock on your door. Uh, they complain, uh, they oftentimes come up to you upset, but there's probably no better job in public life than to be the mayor of the town you grew up in. So thank you so much. Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Your Highness President de Masi, members of the university's board, members of the administration, faculty and staff, friends and family, and of course, members of the 2013 graduating class. Thank you for inviting me to the 16th commencement ceremony of the American University here in Dubai. It is an honor to be here. It is exciting to be here. To think that 17 years ago, none of this was here, this stage, the classrooms, this university, they did not exist. Now, less than two decades later, the American University in Dubai is one of the leading universities uh, in the region uh, and one of the leading universities in the world. It is the first It is the first and only university in the Middle East to be accredited by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. And, and, it's, and it's part of a global network of colleges and universities and the cemented partnerships with institutions of higher learning across the world, including one right in my hometown of Los Angeles the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism at the University of Southern California. 
It is the founding university of the William Jefferson Clinton Scholarship Program, a program that has given American university students the priceless opportunity to study here in the Middle East and to strengthen the bonds of friendship between the United States and the United Arab Emirates. Today, the university community joins together to congratulate another successful graduating class, a class of 431 young men and women, a multicultural class of the leaders, the entrepreneurs, the inventors, and the innovators of the next generation. All of this speaks to the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and to the energy and the dynamism of Dubai and its people. Now this is the first time I've had the pleasure, the honor of traveling here to Dubai, and I've been astounded at what I've witnessed. To spend time in this city, to stand in its public squares, to stare in awe of the, the monumental buildings, to see the easy mix of nationalities and people, is to feel the pulse of the future. Your Highness, I know that Dubai has put in a bid to host the World Expo in 2020. There has never been a World Expo in the Middle East, and it's high time there was one. And from what I've seen and what I've experienced of your great city, I can hardly think of a better place for Expo 2020. You've got my vote. <laughs> Graduates, congratulations. You have my deepest respect. You've worked tremendously hard. You've studied countless hours, taken difficult exams. You've written probing research papers and you've earned these degrees. But as you celebrate, as you revel in your accomplishments, as your hearts rightly swell with pride, I want you to remember one thing. None of you, not a one of you, got here alone. You've been supported and nurtured by your families. The moms and dads, the brothers and the sisters, the grandmothers and grandfathers that are here today. They're, why don't you stand up and give them a big hand? Give them a big hand. Their hearts also swell with pride and love. So take a moment today amidst all of the celebration and thank them and tell them that their love and support are the most important things of all. You see, it's true. <laughs> Families make us who we are. This is something that we can all understand, the fundamental eternal importance of family. We come from different countries, different continents, but we all value family. It's a value that isn't the property of any one country or any one people. It's a, it is a value that's part of our common human inheritance. It belongs to all of us. And when I say family, I'm not just talking about family in the sense of our nuclear family. I'm speaking of family in a deeper, richer sense. Family in the sense of all the obligation that we all share to create a better world. We are members of the human family, and our sense of justice must extend beyond the walls of our home, past the boundaries of our new neighborhood, beyond the city limits, and into the wider world. 
This is the open and generous sense of family and community. And it is more important now than ever that we teach it in our schools and nurture it in our civic and political institutions. You see, we're in the midst of a momentous shift toward a more global, interconnected world. Think about today for a moment. I'm the 41st mayor of Los Angeles, a global city on the far western edge of America. I've traveled over 8,000 miles here to Dubai, the largest city in the United Arab Emirates, and a cultural and business hub of the modern Middle East. I'm speaking at a university whose students represent over 100 nationalities and are here to receive an American-style university education. Is there any better illustration of our new global reality than this university and this ceremony? This is the time that we're living in. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the mayor of one of the most diverse cities in America and maybe the world. More than 135 nationalities are represented in my city. We speak over 220 languages. There are some 37 nationalities that have their largest population in LA that they have in the United States, some 10 or 11 that have their largest population outside of their country of origin. We're 42% foreign born, 64% of LA comes from Latin America, Asia, and Africa. There are some who fear this kind of diversity. They talk about a clash of civilizations, but I know better. I look out my office window and I see the future. Los Angeles draws the adventurous and the ambitious from all four corners of the earth. And they come to Los Angeles because of our diversity, not in spite of it. LA is alive with the energy of a multitude of nationalities and cultures. Newcomers want to draw on this energy. They want to experience the dynamism and the creativity that takes place when so many different communities collaborate and cooperate. Dubai is alive with this same energy. People flock here because this is an oasis of tolerance and multiculturalism. Graduates, you've been very fortunate to enjoy a first-class education in this very special environment. You come from a multitude of backgrounds, you hold a multitude of beliefs, and you learn that together you are much stronger than you are apart. Take what you experienced here and share it. As you start your careers, as you travel out into this interconnected world, I hope that you'll be the 21st century ambassadors of tolerance in the world. You see, our new century needs young people like you. Behind us is the 20th century, a century of unparalleled economic, technological, and cultural progress, but also a century punctuated by violence, calamity, and catastrophe. Graduates, the 20th century is the century of your childhood, a time you may remember, if only vaguely. The century opening up before us, the 21st century, will be your century. It will be the century when you start your career, when you build your family, it will be the century when you make your mark and you build your legacy. You will be the generation who will take us forward. And as such, you face a unique opportunity and a unique challenge. Can you build on the progress but avoid the pitfalls of the past? Can you avoid the mistakes and the missteps of the preceding generations? Now, many of the 21st century challenges we already know closing the growing gap between rich and poor, confronting climate change, managing our growing global interdependence, bringing peace to those areas still torn by war and strife. But there are many future challenges that we cannot predict, that will surprise us, that will severely test our capacity 
for cooperation. As the next generation of leaders, these challenges will fall on your shoulders. Now I have great faith in your capacity to meet these challenges. On the flight over here, I was reading one of the speeches that His Highness gave last year. It was a speech to a group of international CEOs. Sheikh Mohammed told the CEOs a story of the development of Dubai and the direction he gave to some builders. It was a straightforward but very important piece of advice. Think big, His Highness said. Graduates, there's a lot of wisdom in those words. Think big, dare to dream, be bold. In fact, in those two words, think big is the very essence of this special place. As you probably know, we have something in the United States that we call the American dream. It is a bedrock belief, a fundamental aspiration shared by all Americans, that success is open to anyone. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what creed you hold in your heart. If you apply your God-given talents, you will have a chance to climb the ladder of prosperity for you and your family. That's the American dream. Now, having experienced Dubai up close, having had the chance to meet people, to sit down, to talk to them, to sense their spirit, I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, there's something called the Dubai dream as well. It is the belief that by thinking big, by reaching for the stars, astounding progress is possible. Graduates, think about it. The history of this very city is a stellar example of the Dubai dream. This history is a testament to the importance of daring to dream and daring to dream big. Dubai was once a sandy outpost on the edge of the Persian Gulf. Now it is one of the most modern cities, not just in the Middle East, but in the entire world. <laughs> Graduates, wherever you go, carry this dream in your hearts as you go out into the world. Because it's by thinking big that we, the human community, can make progress. Graduates, think about it. The advances in science, in technology, in medicine, in businesses, the, the advances that astound us, that make our lives better, that push humanity forward, advances like the smartphone, like decoding the human genome, like unlocking the mysteries of human biology, like the massive particle accelerator at CERN, where scientists from around the world, including the United Arab Emirates are probing the building blocks of the universe. These steps forward have been the result of boldness, of daring, of thinking big. Graduates, as you go out into the world and start your careers, you're going to hear a familiar phrase. You will hear, no, it can't be done. Graduates, never. Take no for an answer. When someone tells you, no, it can't be done, I want you to follow Sheikh Mohammed's advice. I, I want you to live the Dubai dream. Think big, because the challenges and opportunities of your century will not be solved by thinking small. I want to leave you with some words that the American medical doctor and poet, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Sr., said about the young people of his generation. And I quote, through our great good fortune in our youth, our hearts were touched with fire. It was given to us to learn at the outset that life is a profound and passionate thing. 
I know that you have the fire. You have the creativity, the imagination, the energy that the world will need to meet our common challenges. And thanks to your education here at American University, you also have the values that will serve you well. Your moral compass points in the right direction. It points toward a fundamental responsibility to a wider world. Keep the fire of the youth burning. Stay true to your values. Spend your life being for something, something bigger than yourself. You won't regret it for a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you today. and to celebrate with you. We live in an age of global social networks where it's almost as easy to connect with someone halfway around the world as it is with your neighbor down the street. But even with all of our technology, there is no substitute for meeting face to face. We must always remember that the seeds of international understanding are planted with a handshake and an embrace. May a tree of peace, may a tree of peace sprout strong and healthy from the seeds that we have planted here today. Thank you and peace be with you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for your inspiring and insightful thoughts that you have shared with everyone, and especially your message to the graduating class. Indeed, the American University in Dubai is very much part of the, of the Dubai dream. And that's something that we live every day. All of us who have come here from many parts of the world have become part of this dream. And this dream is what we preach and what we pass on to our students. Thank you very much. In addition to the departmental awards, the university bestows the highest academic honor on that student whose attainment of academic excellence was superlative among the entire graduating class. This year, two students, both from the School of Engineering, had the same highest cumulative GPA, grade point average, in the graduating class. Using appropriate criteria, the university decided to honor both of these students. I am pleased to, incite, uh, to invite Sana Dergham Abdul Ghafoor to come to the podium. Sana has been honored by receiving the Departmental Award in the School of Engineering, and I'd like you to come and um, say a few words. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Your Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Your Highnesses. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, faculty and staff, families and friends, and fellow graduates, Assalamu Alaikum. Our dear father, Sheikh Zaid bin Sultan An Hayyan, may God rest his soul, said, The education of our people is a great wealth. Your Highness, by supporting our university and providing scholarships to many curious young minds, including my own, you have unleashed a hidden treasure that is a testimony of your great vision and leadership for our beloved country. Thank you for your generosity. I wouldn't be here without it. Today, is a celebration of that great wealth. Our golden minds were nurtured thanks to great parents, 
and great teachers. Congratulations, class of 2013. Thank you. Thank you, Sana. Your Highness, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, parents, I am now pleased to present the valedictorian of the class of 2013, Muhammad Hussein Muhammadi. In the name of God, the most gracious and the most merciful. Your Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Your Highnesses, distinguished guests, AUD faculty and staff, family, friends, and all graduation attendees. Good evening. I am. I am honored to speak to you tonight on behalf of the graduating class of 2013. We are gathered to celebrate our success before stepping into the next phase of our lives. Before I continue, let me offer my warmest congratulations to the class of 2013. We would not be here tonight without the help of God Almighty and many dear people. First, I would like to thank His Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. You have not only offered scholarships to students like me, but you have been an inspiration. I aspire to walk in the path of your leadership. AUD faculty and staff, we will never forget your support and guidance. When we first came to AUD, we were timid, fresh from high school, but AUD's diverse and vibrant community provided us with opportunities, nurtured our character and thinking, helped us develop friendships and find mentors. While tonight we celebrate, we will miss the discipline of our classes and the fun times that we have had. I would also like to deeply thank my loving parents and family. Their unwavering support through good times and bad has made tonight possible. The Persian poet, Sheikh Musleh al-Din Saadi, may have written in the Middle Ages, but his poem, Bani Adam, is inscribed on the entrance of the United Nations building in New York and captures the relationship of all those involved in the AUD community today. His poem reads as follows. Human beings are members of a whole in creation of one essence and soul. If one member is afflicted with pain, other members uneasy will remain. If you have no sympathy for human pain, the name of human you cannot retain. <laughs> Class of 2013, we are all connected through essence and soul in a global community. Our academic experiences were not just limited to our individual efforts. Our family and friends felt our pain as we worked hard to finish projects and to meet deadlines. <laughs> Safe and Sana. We were together like the three musketeers for most of our time at AUD. I will never forget the sleepless nights that we have spent 
working together, not just on research projects for our engineering classes, but also bringing honor to AUD by winning the competitions we entered. I must also thank my fellow colleagues in the AUD IEEE student branch for their tremendous efforts in making an active engineering student organization at AUD a reality. <laughs> Class of 2013, tonight is a joyous occasion. Our dreams have finally seen light. We are obtaining our degrees. Let us keep the fire of determination that brought us to this point alive in all our endeavors. Our shoulders are burned with great expectations. And even though tonight some of us will separate, some of us pursuing graduate studies as I will at McGill University, while others enter the workforce, we will forever be proud AUD graduates. Class of 2013, I urge you to welcome our sun of enlightenment rising up higher than ever. Opportunities await us at every doorstep. Remember, we AUD graduates will build tomorrow's society overflowing with knowledge, humanity, and as Saadi says, essence and soul. Thank you. Your Highness, Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, for whose patronage and presence we are grateful, Your Highnesses, Ms. Huffington, Mr. Villarraigosa, distinguished guests, parents, faculty, and staff, graduates. Today I have three in mind peace, ethics, and civic engagement. First, peace. The greatest threat to world peace is intolerance. In a rapidly changing world, people and nations often seek to protect themselves from any world view other than their own. They fool themselves into believing that they have all the answers. The failure to internalize and appreciate difference becomes a source of hatred and resentment often leading to war and other forms of conflict. Your education, multicultural in concept and experience, is the answer to bigotry and mistrust. You are equipped to produce an enlightened world order. Care about understanding everything human. Ethics. Ethical behavior is of such vital importance that personal and institutional stability depend on it. It may be the absence of time to think or simply the struggle to keep up, but with accelerated change, it seems that boundaries are fading between truth and deceit, propriety and negligence, ethical transgression has become a theme of our day. A truly educated mind is a principled mind that discerns. Only principle can conquer corruption. And as science and technology lay new discoveries at the world's doorstep, it is up to you to lead the debate on the ethical dilemmas that emerge. Care about integrity and doing the right thing. 
Finally, civic engagement. An involved citizenry strengthens a nation's unity and stature. But change at unprecedented speed presents a risk of leaving little time for people to focus on anything outside themselves. Last December, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid's extraordinary gesture of SMSing National Day greetings to all citizens and residents of the UAE sent a clear message. People matter. Societies are built by people who, with pride and commitment, serve the common good. Most of you will contribute through a profession for which education has prepared you. But beyond personal achievement, I urge you to support causes and interests that lend texture to the fabric of society care about participation in endeavor that is collective. And so, my message this year is that the future is not something that happens to you. You're the one with the paintbrush in hand. What's in store for humankind will be determined by how closely you heed Gandhi's call to action. Be the change that you wish to see in the world. Now, I don't hear any music, but I know it's time for us to leave. <laughs> Commencement. Commencement. The end and the beginning fills this bittersweet moment. Allow me the indulgence of using poetry to bridge your past and future. And now, we must part. If in the twilight of memory we should meet once more, we shall speak again together, and you shall sing to me a deeper song. And if our hearts should meet, we shall build another tower in the sky. Graduates of the class of 2013, care. Build that tower by choosing to make a difference, not in the heavens, but right here on earth. Congratulations, goodbye, and God bless. Thank you.